Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, August 2nd. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic, and uh, this is Tropical Storm Bertha, now moving just southwest of Puerto Rico. If we zoom in on it here, this is really... Um, this is really a mess, uh, to be honest. This is bringing some needed rains to the islands here, but it's really hard to find a center. And I didn't pull up the recon, I should have done that, but there's no real westerly winds on the south side of the center here. And this looks to me like an open wave. Um, you see a lot of, um, when the recon's down there, you see a lot of light south southeasterly winds south of where the center is supposed to be up here by the southwestern corner of Puerto Rico. And uh, that's the classic signature of a storm that has opened up. And again, it's because this area of the Caribbean right here is very hard for these uh, weak storms and waves to move into because you see the trade winds accelerating to the west here. And that makes it really hard to generate westerly winds relative to the ocean surface um, in a storm like this. So uh, this may have opened up. It may even lose the name Bertha, but the NHC tends to leave the name on there until they are very sure uh, that this is not uh, coming back, at least for a little while. Half of it's going to move over the mountains of the Dominican Republic. The other half will stay over the ocean. So we'll see how much of it survives. Again, uh, this system is going to be moving into a more favorable environment up here between the United States and Bermuda over the coming days. And uh, some of the models still support the idea that I've been talking about since Bertha's inception that she may have her best chance of strengthening up in here west of Bermuda on her way out to sea like this. And uh, so we may still see her uh, try to rejuvenate and get some life back. Um, but until then, uh, we will see. It will not be a threat to land at that point. Most of the land impacts are about to end. There are tropical storm warnings out for the southeastern Bahamas. If this gets close enough here, may bring some gusty weather uh, to them over there as well. But then the land impacts at that point will be done. Now, I want to talk a little bit beyond Bertha today because we're now in August, and uh, this is when we start looking toward the peak of the hurricane season. The uh, We call the real hurricane season August 15th through October 15th because that's the period during which we see the most hurricanes, and that's when activity really picks up. You can see storms during June and July, but it's really not until mid-August and onward that things really start to uh, to get going in the Atlantic. Now this year as a whole we've talked about being a quieter season than normal, perhaps a very quiet one, uh, perhaps not as quiet as last year which was one of the quietest on record, uh, but certainly quieter than normal due to the uh, El Nino trying to come on in the eastern Pacific and uh, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation being negative which means we have cold water in here and stable conditions which we've seen have done a number on Bertha has prevented her from really developing because of the conditions out here and that's why we think this year will be quiet but as we look forward now now that we're actually in the middle of the season are we expecting a lot of activity during the next couple of months well there's a couple things worth looking at if we look at the near term first of all this is the European showing the MJO here going into phase two and remember the MJO is a wave of rising and sinking air that moves west to east across the tropics and when you get it down here in phases one and two like this that tends to promote rising air over the Atlantic and that's favorable for tropical disturbances to develop thunderstorms and uh, we see the European putting us in here now you see where we've been we've been over here so far we've been in the western pacific the maritime continent uh, these regions that el nino tends to promote upward motion that promotes sinking in the atlantic but now we're coming out here for the first time in a while and uh, this can make the atlantic more favorable in the short term uh, during the next couple of weeks now the other thing that i was noticing is if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies here uh, reds warmer than normal normal blues colder than normal those of you who watch this map regularly might notice some differences here and one of those is this big red bomb off of the Canadian Maritimes. This is very much warmer than normal water off of Canada and this is not how it has been so far this season. This was actually much colder than normal dark blues as the season began and I'll show you that here. This was two months ago beginning of June, beginning of the hurricane season. Look at how blue and purple this was compared to now. Look at how red it's completely reversed. And uh, also we notice all these reds, this warm water showing up off of northwestern Africa. And again, this has been different. It was colder before, and now you see it turning warmer off of northwestern Africa. And both of these regions here are indicative of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the AMO for short, turning more towards the positive phase. And what that means 
When the AMO is positive, you tend to have warm water in the North Atlantic, cooler water in the mid-latitude Atlantic, and then warmer water off northwestern Africa and the tropics. So these two areas here are showing a little bit of a change. Now you notice that the uh, main development region is still cooler than normal in here. And uh, if that doesn't change, then this won't matter too much. But as this warm water starts coming off northwestern Africa, the currents flow like this. They flow, they flow from northeast to southeast. So this can start allowing the main development region west of Africa to start warming up. And that can make it more favorable for these waves coming off of Africa and moving into perhaps warmer water and more favorable environment. In addition, this warm water off Africa, it helps mediate or uh, mitigate dry air outbreaks that come off of Africa because they tend to come from the northeast and warmer water here uh, can add moisture to the air before it attacks tropical waves down here in the central Atlantic like Bertha. So uh, this pattern, seeing this reversal in here, uh, at this point in the season could indicate that the Atlantic is about to become a little bit more favorable right in time for the peak of the season compared to what it has been so far, but we're going to have to see. And remember that when we had uh, last year, that's over here, this is 2013, August 1st, we had a similar pattern. We had warm water up here, we had uh, pretty warm water down here in the main development region, and we all thought that this was going to mean the season was going to be fairly active with a positive AMO, and that things were going to be really active in the tropics, and that turned out to be wrong. Why? Well, because this warm water here was offset too far to the south. Notice that even down to 30 degrees latitude in here, which is right here down near Bermuda, we still have this warm water, and it was warmer relative to normal than the water down here, and this really distorted the upward motion pattern. You want the upward motion focused in the deep tropics. Instead, it was offset up here. The warm water wasn't getting far enough north to allow that cool water to come in the middle to make that sandwich of warm, cool, warm. So it uh, it ended up being a quiet season because the configuration was not correct. Now, if we look back at this year, we see that the warm water is confined more to the north here, so it's a little bit more favorable than last year, but we still have warm over cold instead of cold over warm. So until that changes, uh, things will still be rather unfavorable down here in the deep tropics. But like I said, we will have to see how that changes over the next 30 days or so. The other thing that has changed is if you look back at June, see how warm the Gulf of Guinea is south of Africa compared to now, see this cold tongue developing. And this is important uh, because this cold water here it promotes high pressure, which forces air to converge up towards the African monsoon trough. And this allows tropical waves to become stronger as they come off. You like to see cold uh, south of the deep tropical Atlantic here because that really allows pressures to lower where the waves are coming off. So that really helps the tropical waves, which may make them stronger as the season goes on. And you see that now already. This is the uh, African ITF, the intertropical front, which basically just marks the northern edge of the precipitation that's falling. And uh, the black line here is the climatological average position. And you see the red line is the current one. It's, uh, it's coming up north now of its normal position, indicating that this precipitation shown in green here is coming up farther north than normal, which is favorable for tropical waves coming off Africa in a strong state. And you can see right now on the satellite, this is not an African train uh, wave train to sneeze at. You can see a couple big waves here over the continent, convectively active. When the MJO goes into phase two, this really takes off. And so it can send waves out across the Atlantic. Now you see one right here, it's full of dry air because even if these waves come off, you can see the uh, main development region is still dry and unfavorable, so they end up not developing. But if you send off strong waves, eventually if the conditions become more favorable out here, you can get one or two of them to develop um, and become full-fledged hurricanes, unlike Bertha, which uh, failed entirely to develop. Uh, you can sometimes get one or two hurricanes even in the quietest of years and those can end up threatening land down the line. So there's always a chance, especially when Africa is pumping off strong wave after strong wave. And uh, here's the GFS Ensembles uh, week two precipitation anomalies. Green showing wetter than normal conditions and you see dry down here because of the cool water forcing the wet anomalies to the north. The waves farther north will be stronger and more apt to develop out here. You still see the tropic, oh, the tropical Atlantic is still dry here. So again, we have active waves coming into unfavorable conditions, but again, things are changing in the Atlantic all of a sudden. Things are starting to change a little bit uh, with the sea surface temperature configuration. So if this water starts warming up in here and this water starts cooling up here, then we may see these waves coming off into a more favorable environment over time. 
And as the MJO goes into phase two, not only do we get Africa active, uh, but you see that this ridging starts developing in the 10 to 15 day period over the Northwest Atlantic and the Maritime Canada. And so this trough comes back over the Northern Plains and uh, you see that the uh, the pressures, the heights in the tropics are not quite as high as they were. This is days one to five. Notice all the oranges in here, high pressure, unfavorable conditions. We go out to day 11 to 15. There's not as much orange in here. It's not exactly replaced by blue, but there's not as much orange here. The pressures are a little bit closer to normal and you see Africa showing up with low heights here. So again, the Atlantic looking like it might become a little bit more favorable during the coming weeks, just in time for the peak of the season from mid-August through September. Uh, so there are reasons to believe that we may see activity start picking up by the end of the month and into September, but we will have to see here. Again, uh, there's a lot left to happen to make this area of the Atlantic actually favorable. You can clearly see all this dry air and uh, stability. It is not very favorable, um, but it may grow a little bit more favorable over the next month and a half. So we will see. Again, it only takes one storm. Remember, it's been nine years since the last Category 3 or stronger hurricane hit the United States. And uh, it's easy to forget after that length of time what those kind of storms do and how often they actually do hit our country in the U.S. And same with the Caribbean. You know, it's, it's, been, a, it's been an inactive streak for a while with major hurricanes. Uh, 2007 was the last time we had majors run through the, the Caribbean, I believe. So uh, it's been a while. And uh, it only takes one big storm to come across the Atlantic to hit land and uh, ruin somebody's life. So please be prepared as the peak of the season approaches. No matter how quiet the year ends up overall, it could always uh, end badly for someone. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.